Truly, the Lord has borne our infirmities and he has carried our sorrows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them from all sides to bring them back to their land. I will make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy and cleanse them so that they might be my people, and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them, and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where their fathers lived. They shall live in it forever. They and their children and their children's children with my servant David, their prince, forever. I will make with them a covenant of peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nations shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, proclaim it on distant isles and say, he who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. Then the virgin shall make merry and dance, 
and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, what are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, All will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, But he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another as they were in the temple area, what do you think, that he will not come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. And others go off to tell chief priests and the Pharisees, what Jesus had done. In John's gospel, there's this sort of division that's constant throughout John's gospel, which is between the Jews and those who had accepted Christ and followed Christ. And as John is writing, much later than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He's addressing a current division that's going on among the people. And so there are some who saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. And they're coming to believe in him. And there are others who are afraid of what they might lose if they believe in him. 
if the people come to believe in him, we're going to lose our nation. If the people come to believe in him, what will be left for me? If I really put my faith in Christ, what will I have to give up? Or Jesus, if I really follow you, if I really give you my whole heart, what will I have to give up? If I give you all of myself, are you going to take care of me? Like that was my prayer for Advent two years ago. If I give you everything, are you going to take care of me? And it's one of those questions that, I mean, we know the answer to, right? Because we know our left brain knows of course Jesus is going to take care of it because he's Jesus. And yet sometimes our right brain isn't caught up with that. And so our goal is to slow down enough to let that truth really settle into our hearts. That he is going to take care of it. And that he can even work through the kind of division that we experience in our own lives and work through the division that we experience in our families and work through the division that we experience in our culture. Caiaphas speaks up <clears throat> and he says, do not consider it's better for you that one man should die instead of the people so that the whole nation may not perish. And he's saying this in a very practical way that you're not going to lose everything because if we just kill him, we're going to be fine. And John points out that our Lord, the Lord, God, was working through Caiaphas and speaking through Caiaphas. Because in fact, one man does die so that the nation might not perish. One person does die so that we all can live. And our Lord, goes through his passion, his death, and his resurrection so that we ourselves can live. And even in that division that existed between the Jews and the followers of Jesus, God speaks through that. And he penetrates that and he changes it. And he can do the same thing for us now. That even when our own leaders in our own lives make decisions that may be imprudent or they may not be the right one or we live in a divided country, our Lord still penetrates that and he works through it. And he opens up new possibilities. You know, he opens up new possibilities. You know, in a very practical way, we see that happening even right now. So one of the retreatants was on the phone with me earlier, and they were saying that they were talking to a mom that's in their Bible study. And the mom in her Bible study was like, wow, they should like live stream those retreats all the time because I can't go to a retreat with all these, like, like they should be doing this all the time. And, and maybe that will be something that happens all the time. 
and it will be this kind of good thing that comes out of the situation that we're in. And our Lord uses that. I have friends who started live streaming their masses two weeks ago. And some, one of them is in North Carolina. And somebody commented on his Facebook live stream, like, wow, I don't have a church and I'm in this town. Maybe I should go to this church. And our Lord's reaching to people. Well, he's reaching to people. And we have this opportunity to be still with him. And in that stillness to recognize his relentless love for us and the relentless way in which he continues to gather his people to himself. The other interesting point that kind of jumped out at me in the gospel reading today is where it says Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim. And there he remained with his disciples. And so again, as our Lord is going into his his passion, death, and resurrection as our Lord is entering into Holy Week. He continues to double back on where he started. Yesterday, he goes to the place where John Crow was baptized. Today, he goes to this town near the desert. As he started, things started at his baptism. <clears throat> and immediately after his baptism, he went to the desert. as if he's going back to the preparation that he had done for his public ministry before entering into the culmination of that public ministry. And so in a certain sense, we imitate him as we go into retreat, because we go into retreat to sort of double back on, okay, where has my relationship been with our Lord? How did I get here? Maybe I need to double back and do some things again because they didn't stick the first time. Or maybe we're just resting in his goodness. You know, this afternoon we'll have an opportunity to spend some extended time in adoration, kind of doubling back on those things. And, and so again, somebody asked me <laughs> earlier, they said, so when you go on retreat, is it like therapy and you're just supposed to be like digging through your life and trying to find all these problems? Uh, like, no, it doesn't have to be that. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be that. I have a spiritual directee and recently we were talking and, uh, and so healing ministries are very like dispersed throughout the church right now. And it seems to be aware of Lord is reaching lots of people. And, uh, but sometimes young people get caught up, caught up in that and they feel like they need to spend all of their time finding wounds to heal. And, uh, and I, I said to her, this one spiritual directee a few weeks ago, I said, you know, you don't have to have problems. Like, it's okay. You can just be okay. You don't have to go digging for all your problems. If they're there, they're going to surface as you're encountering our Lord. But you don't have to go, like, digging through your life trying to find them. If you feel like something's off, then we can look around for what might be in the way. And, uh, and then I talked to her maybe a few days ago, and she said, Father, the best thing you said to me was I don't have to have problems. Like, things are okay. And so, like, if you're doing okay, just rest in that and, and spend some time in gratitude with that and, and allow that sense of, like, things are good to settle into your heart. You know, if things are in the way, then we have to find them. We have to look for those. And, uh, 
And so my preaching style tends to presuppose that something's in the way. Otherwise, we're all saints. But I don't want to freak anybody out that you have to have problems. And when our Lord went to the desert, like he experienced all these temptations. And they're the same kinds of temptations that we experience. And our Lord always has this perfect surrender. And our part is to look to him to learn how to live as he lived and how to love as he loved and how to surrender our lives as he does to the Father. And he's always seeking to help us to do that. And so today, let us pray that that we recognize the way that our Lord is using this time to make straight the crooked lines of our own life. How our Lord redeems everything and, and he can infuse every situation of our life with his grace. So that every moment of suffering, every moment of division, every moment of confusion, every moment of being misunderstood becomes an invitation to encountering him. An invitation to transformation. Or an occasion in which he can manifest his glory and his lordship over our lives. Let us offer our prayers to petition to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our bishops, for all leaders in the church, that they may relentlessly reach toward the children who have been entrusted to their care, we pray to the Lord. For all government leaders that they truly make decisions informed by wisdom for the common good of the people they govern, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all families, especially those who experience distance, geographical, or emotional division that our Lord may bring healing to the space between them, we pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. For the sick and the suffering, for all those who have died, that they may come to contemplate the face of Christ in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. Father, hear these prayers we bring to you in humility and love and answer them if they're in accord with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. 
Hey, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, with the grace and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for, for us, by your power, a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our souls, heaven and earth, glory, glory, glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It is truly right. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned my grave, but only sin where my soul shall be. This time I invite all those who are unable to be with us today to join in making the spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, although I cannot now receive you in the most holy sacrament of the altar, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and abide with me forever. You in me and I in thee, in time and in eternity. Come to me all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, 
Grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people. Keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel. Amen. Thank you.